coordinated universal time. I am in radio contact. Okay, so today in the lab, we are doing more work on our Kinemetrics 468 DC satellite controlled clock. Uh, I'm going to replace this flex unit between the power supply and the main board. We're going to see what we can do about these capacitors here, see if I've got new ones in stock. And I've already taken the liberty of removing the counterfeit L7805CVs from the last Kinemetrics episode. And uh, I've replaced it with a single LM7805 from Fairchild that we tested good up to 1.5 amps. Uh, and as it turns out, the second regulator that was on this plug isn't actually needed because it just gives us more 5 volts out of this port. Uh, so let's see what we can do with it. Alright, so I think I'm going to start by removing this. And you can just see, well, it's just flaking apart with age. Ugh. Okay, so my weapon of choice for desoldering work nowadays is the Weller DS600 portable desoldering station and uh, this is what the uh, business side of the unit looks like. Uh, so we have the typical Weller soldering iron handle, uh, heater section, and I believe this is at a fixed 800 degrees and the tips the tips are changeable so I have like four tips with different diameters uh, like the one flaw that I find with these is the uh, solder collection tube is glass so I haven't found cheap replacement yet but if you drop that it's probably going to shatter uh, so if you have one of these, be sure you get more solder collecting tubes just to have. So. And I can hear our temperature regulator cycling. So I just do like a little swirl around the pad before turning the vacuum on. Okay. Give the ribbon a tug. And look at that. Came out perfectly first time. So, uh, this is kind of how bad the ribbon got. It's uh, totally delaminating, and our conductors are just sort of flopping around in there. Okay, so now I think what I'm going to try doing is. Uh, we're going to make a replacement out of ribbon wire. So I think this is a uh, 25 count ribbon wire, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to leave every other wire not connected so that I get my 0.1 inch spacing that's on the pin header here. Uh, so when you're playing with ribbon wire, it uh, really helps to have like uh, the right tools so this is actually the proper cutter for ribbon cable so we'll just uh, make us make us a cut and look at how nice that came out so now we can trim that 
to the uh, appropriate amount of conductors that we need. So there we are trimmed to 13 conductors. We'll only be using 7 and leave 6 not connected. Okay, so I did this with a razor off camera, but I've prepped our can cable so that I have the uh, the six that we're not going to use prepped for cutting and these will be the sevens that we use so I'll strip the ends off those and tin the leads in preparation for uh, installation into the board alright so here's the ribbon cable after cutting alright so now we'll uh, We'll strip our wires here and get them prepped for soldering. This might be 24 gauge wire, but the strippers seem to like biting onto them as 26. So the hardest part is getting just one wire at a time in the strippers. Okay, so we're all stripped up, and I will solder these off camera because I need both my hands. Okay, we are all soldered up and looking good. Uh, so, one of the things, we need a detachable end for this connector and the power supply. And you can get pins that fit here that are solder lug. Uh, but they are fairly expensive, and the problem is no one really stocks them. So if you want them, you're probably going to have to buy like 2,000 at a shot. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take some of the normal SIP-style socket and we'll stuff our wires in there and solder it, and that'll fit this plug just fine. All right, so while you weren't looking, this is what I accomplished. So this is going to be the side that plugs into our power supply. We're soldered into our replacement ribbon cable. So that plugs in there. Just right. So now we'll fold this over and get each one in there and I'll solder it from the bottom. Okay, the ribbon cable's now installed and I've got it flipped over and I'm going to re-solder it. All right, so this is how our replacement cable came out. Actually, not too bad. All right, so now I'm gonna replace the power supply capacitors that I have on hand.
So it's perfectly fine to solder from the top of your board. Uh, and in this case with the big components it helps me to uh, make sure they're fully flush against the board. Whereas if I turned it over I'd have to reach around and use a hand to hold everything flush while I'm soldering it. So back here on the underside, notice we did get good, uh, good solder all the way through the board, soldering it on the top, and now I can just trim the leads. It's always great that my trash is just boom right there. Now we'll uh, get the 10 microfarad caps out. Okay, so solder those in real quick. I typically run my iron at 750 degrees and uh, I did calibrate it with uh, my temperature meter. So I am getting an honest 750 degrees at the tip of the iron. Okay, now with the new capacitors installed, we have successfully passed the smoke test and our clock has synchronized with GPS and uh, we are back in operational condition.